good morning students so here uh, we continue with the revision of unit 5 okay so unit 5 revision continue okay so we <coughs> introduce an important topic which is known as noise bandwidth of a system so we introduce a topic which is known as noise bandwidth of a system okay since in unit 5 we are dealing with linear systems with random inputs okay so we, we introduce this topic of noise bandwidth of a linear system okay so what do we mean by noise bandwidth of a system so the noise bandwidth of a, it, it is defined for a practical system okay in terms of the ideal system okay so as we know the systems any systems any system can have a transfer function okay so that is represented by a function which is h of omega okay so this is in the omega domain so it has a transfer function which can be of different types so this is say a low pass transfer function okay so we can have a high pass transfer function which is looking like this okay so similarly this is omega so greater than some omega cutoff so this is up to some omega c okay so all these are different types of transfer functions so it can have band pass transfer function similarly it can any system can have a band stop transfer function okay so it will be something like this okay so all these transfer functions are ideal transfer functions all these are ideal transfer functions okay so apart from this the transfer function can also take any shape okay so we can say h of omega it can take the shape of uh, say uh, decaying exponential on both sides so provided our h of t that is the impulse response is a real function of time so then we can have even symmetric h of omega okay it can be of any other form so it can be of a wave form like this okay there are different types of h of omega that can be possible okay so now using this we define what is known as a noise bandwidth okay so the definition of noise bandwidth is something like this the noise bandwidth of a practical system so noise bandwidth of a practical system Okay, is the bandwidth is the bandwidth of an ideal system which passes the same noise okay, which passes the same noise power which passes the same noise power as does the practical system as does the practical system okay so what do we mean by this is so suppose we have a practical system which is having a transfer function like this let's say it is something like this it is a decaying transfer function okay so and then uh, it has uh, omega cutoff frequency omega c so this is the transfer function of a practical system All right so when say a white noise is passed through this okay so a white noise has a spectrum which is constant for all the frequencies okay and it is its value is given by n naught by 2 okay so this height is given by n naught by 2 okay so when a white noise is passed through the system it gives an output power okay so it gives out an output random process okay so white noise white noise is the input random process so when it is passed through this type of a system it gives an output random process which again has a power spectral density okay so it has a 
an output y of t which is a random process with a particular power density spectrum okay so now if we design an ideal system so how is how will an ideal system look like okay so an ideal system will look something like this which is a perfectly rectangular transfer function okay so if we want an ideal system to have the same power of the output as it is given by the practical system then we have to limit the bandwidth of the system at some value wn okay, or say omega n okay so this value of omega n okay at which we want to restrict this rectangular function so that the output power remains same okay so same output power in both the cases okay so then that value of omega n so that is known as our noise bandwidth so this is known as our noise bandwidth okay so to derive the expression for noise bandwidth so consider a system having a low pass function h of omega so we'll have a small derivation of this noise bandwidth we consider a system having low pass transfer function h of omega assume white noise is applied to the input okay so let us assume the same kind of transfer function which is h of omega okay so for this let us say we are applying this kind of a white noise okay so this is this is the power density spectrum of white noise okay this is sxx of omega of white noise so this constant line that you see here okay so the dashed line so that is the power density spectrum of white noise okay <clears throat> so the power density of this white noise is say as you know it is n0 by 2 all right so when uh, so this is n0 is a positive constant okay so the total average power emerging from the network that is given by pyy so that is given by so the total average power so let's say i'll just make it clear okay so consider a system having a low pass transfer function so such as this okay so assume white noise is passed through so with white noise input okay, which implies that the input sxx of omega so that is equal to n0 by 2 where n0 is a constant okay so the total average power so let's say we write this the total average power emerging out of this system okay emerging out of this system or in the output of the system okay, is given by okay so we know what is the relationship between the power density spectrum and the total output power so that is given by p y y okay so that is equal to it is like the inverse Fourier transform relationship 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity n0 by 2 into modulus of h of omega the whole square d omega okay so this relationship is coming from our uh, relationship between the output power and power density okay so this is coming from the relationship the output power pyy is given by 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity s x x of omega into modulus of h of omega the whole square d omega okay so this is the relationship where this represents the input psd okay input power density spectrum Density 
spectrum okay so the here what we have the power density spectrum is our n0 by 2 okay so here it is n0 by 2 so we have this relationship okay so this is coming from so this is the standard relationship okay, in which we are substituting sxx of omega is equal to n0 by 2 okay so using this relationship we have arrived at this okay so where you have substituted sxx of omega equal to n0 by 2 so because we are having an input white noise okay so white noise has sxx of omega as just n0 by 2 okay so now so assuming that our system response is real it is a real function that is h of t is a real function so our h of omega will be symmetric about the vertical axis okay so our h of omega is symmetrical okay so assuming so assuming h of t is a real function it is a real valued function so h of omega is an even function okay so this is a basic property in fourier transforms okay, whenever we are having a fourier transform of a real function it will be an even function of omega even function of omega okay so what we can do this integral which is from minus infinity to plus infinity so let's say this is the equation one okay so the integral in equation one so the integral so the integral in equation one okay it can be written as twice that of the single integral that is the integral on the left uh, right side or left side okay so twice of zero to infinity okay, so it can be written as so p y y so that is equal to n naught by 2 pi okay so integral so what we have here is so already we have a 2 pi okay so this is actually n naught by 2 but there is so this will be n naught by 2 into 2 pi into 2 times of integral 0 to infinity modulus of h of omega the whole square d omega okay so what we have done here is we have taken out this n naught by 2 okay so this n naught by 2 okay so this n naught by 2 is taken outside so we have actually n naught by 2 into 2 pi okay so this integral from minus infinity to plus infinity that is written as 2 into integral 0 to infinity okay so we have a 2 here again we have a 2 at the denominator so you can cancel out this 2 okay so simply we have so finally what we have is p y y is equal to n naught by 2 pi integral 0 to infinity modulus of h of omega the whole square d omega okay so this is our equation 2 okay so now consider an idealized system that is equivalent to the actual system in the sense that both produce the same out output average power okay when they are excited by the white noise okay so in input we are giving white noise okay let's say we have an idealized system so what do you mean by idealized system so let's say we have a system which is like this okay which is having a transfer function like this okay a perfect rectangular transfer function okay so just compare this with our practical system so practical system is having some kind of a function of omega okay it can be like this or it can be say it can take a form like this okay so it's it's not a perfect rectangle but some kind of a function okay so now we consider a so consider an ideal system okay which will also give the same pyy okay so usually how this happens is we are also assuming that the value of this function at omega equal to 0 okay so this value okay so this value is same as the value that is taken by the practical system so let's say this value and this value are same okay 
so let's say this uh, name this transfer function as h i of omega okay so h of i of omega is such that h i of omega equal to 0 is same as h of omega equal to 0 okay so both 0 both the functions are having the same value okay so now <clears throat> this ideally system is designed in such a way that the uh, at omega equal to 0 both h i and h have the same value and also that h of omega is a perfect that is h i of omega is a perfect rectangular function okay so only thing we are going to modify is this upper limit in omega that is the cutoff frequency in omega that is we can say that as omega n okay so because of changing this width of omega n we are going to restrict the power p y y to the power that is output of the practical system having h of omega as transfer function okay so now for this idealized system for this idealized system we calculate what is the output power okay so before that we can express this function h i of omega in terms of whatever we have discussed so h i of omega okay so h i of omega the whole square okay so that can be written as modulus of h of 0 the whole square for omega values less than omega n okay and it is 0 for omega values greater than omega n okay so this is how we have designed this ideal system okay so now our task is to just find what is this omega n okay so for what value of omega n that we are choosing the total output power in both the cases that is in the case of a practical system like this okay so this is a practical system practical system okay with the transfer function which is a which is not an ideal pulse so this is an ideal system okay so we are going to choose omega n such that the total output power p y y in both the practical system as well as the ideal system is the same this is our ideal system so they both are same okay so the output power in the ideal system it can be represented by the same equation so the output power in the idealized system or say ideal system okay, so that is again given by the same equation okay 1 by 2 pi into integral minus infinity to plus infinity sxx of omega into modulus of h of omega the whole square only difference is here we have h i of omega because of the ideal system transfer function so we have p y y of say the ideal system let us represent it by p i of y y p suffix i y y so that is equal to 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to plus infinity again s x x of omega here again the input is the same that is n naught by 2 into modulus of h i of omega the whole square d omega right so now this can be the what are the limits here so it is from minus infinity to plus infinity but we have non-zero value for the ideal function only between say minus omega n to plus omega n okay so in all other regions it is zero here here also it is zero here also it is zero it is non-zero only for this limit <coughs> so what happens our limits are changed so this can be written as so this is 1 by 2 pi okay so that is integral 0 to omega n n naught by 2 so what is the value of this hi of omega in this region it is just h of 0 okay so that is modulus of h of 0 the whole screen okay so that is how we have designed it okay so it is same as h of 0 within the limits minus omega n to plus omega n okay so in this region it is same as h of 0 into d omega okay so again so here we, we are just uh, 
uh, having we are just uh, integrating it from 0 to omega n okay but it is actually from minus omega n to omega n so when i write it as 0 to omega n that is we are integrating only on the right side we have to include twice of this okay so now simplifying this equation we can write so p i of y y so that is equal to so you can cancel out this two so we have <coughs> n naught by 2 pi integral 0 to omega n modulus of h of 0 the whole square d omega okay so now what is our requirement the total power output of the ideal system should be same as our practical system okay so this is the total power in our practical system okay so this and the total power in our ideal system should they both should be same okay so this is let us say this is 3 okay so since we require that so since we require the total output power in both the practical system and the ideal system be the same So we equate equation 3 and 3 and 1. Okay, so what happens to equation 3? <coughs> right, so we equate equation, we equate 3 and 1. Okay. so what happens to 3 so this is a constant here right so <coughs> h of 0 is a constant so as you know it is a single constant value so you can actually evaluate this integral so this is p suffix i of y y so that is equal to okay so this h of 0 is a constant so it comes outside of the integral so inside we just have omega okay so omega n so when you substitute the limits so we'll just evaluate this integral it is a naught by 2 pi into modulus h of 0 the whole square into omega with upper limit omega n and 0 right so when you substitute the limit what this becomes this becomes as pi of y y so that is equal to a naught by 2 pi into modulus h of 0 the whole square into omega n all right so now this let, let's say this is our 3 or say 3 dash now we equate this and our equation 1 so what happens so n naught by 2 pi modulus h of 0 the whole square okay, this is into okay so this is into wn okay, into Sorry, omega n so that is equal to what is the equation 1 so 1 by 2 pi sorry, actually we have simplified this equation 1 and this is 2 okay so let's say we are equating it to 2 okay so this is the simplified version okay so we are equating 3 and 2 okay so what is the equation 2 here <coughs> so that is n naught by 2 pi integral 0 to infinity modulus of h of omega the whole square d omega okay so let's say we are equating this to 2 n naught by 2 pi integral 0 to infinity modulus h of omega the whole square d omega okay so now our aim is to find out this omega n that is the noise bandwidth okay so that is the bandwidth of the ideal system which gives the same output power as the practical system okay so just rewrite this so we can just cancel out this a naught by 2 pi a naught by 2 pi so we have omega n is equal to 
integral 0 to infinity modulus of h of omega the whole square d omega divided by modulus of h of 0 the whole square okay so this is the required formula for the noise bandwidth of a of any practical system okay so this is the formula for noise bandwidth of any practical system okay so this is noise bandwidth of any practical system with the transfer function h of omega with the transfer function h of omega okay so let's see an example in this by using by taking the case of a a practical low pass filter okay a practical rc low pass filter okay so let's say this is example so this is example one okay so we we want to find so we want to calculate the noise bandwidth calculate the noise bandwidth of a practical low pass filter okay so uh, which is given by an rc component okay, as shown below okay. so we have a circuit which is a low pass filter so usually it is denoted by so an r connected in series and a capacitance in parallel okay so the series in parallel we are uh, terming it based on our input and output okay so this is our input input port we are giving input here and then here we are taking output say let's say we are having v in of t and here we are taking v out of t okay so this is your so let's say this has r <coughs> value r and this is c okay so we want to calculate the noise bandwidth of a practical low pass filter so what is the requirement for calculating the noise bandwidth that is what we have to find here is this omega m okay so what what is the requirement what we ha should have is our transfer function okay so the first step is to derive the transfer function of this ideal low pass filter okay so this solution we first find out transfer function of the RC circuit even above okay, so first find the transfer function of the RC circuit given above so to find the transfer function the simplest method is to first write the circuit entire circuit in the Laplace domain okay so writing the circuit in the laplace domain so what we have is so redraw the circuit in laplace domain redraw the circuit in laplace domain so which is again a frequent complex frequency domain okay so what we have here is so r remains same as r in the laplace domain so what happens to c so it becomes 1 by sc okay so in the frequency complex frequency domain <coughs> the capacitive impedance that is given by 1 by sc okay so similarly v in of t that was in the input that now becomes v in of s okay again the output voltage that we are taking here 
So that becomes v out of s. Because yes, v of v out of s. Okay. So now we can just use our <coughs> voltage division rule for this. Okay. So you, you know what is the voltage division rule? Okay. So we have two resistors, say R1, and then one more resistor R2. Okay, so this is V in, this is V out. Okay, so what is V out? So V out is given by R2 divided by R1 plus R2 of V in. Okay, so this is the voltage division rule. Okay, so the same rule is applied here to find out <coughs> this V out. Okay, so V out of S can be written as r2 which is the r2 here that is the impedance of the capacitance so it is 1 by sc divided by so r so this is both both the resistance added together okay so this is r plus 1 by sc into v in of s. okay so <coughs> now the transfer function in the laplace domain that is the ratio of output to the input so what happens so v out of s divided by v in of s so that is your transfer function in the Laplace domain. So that becomes 1 by SC into R plus 1 by SC. Okay. So now if you take the LCM of this, say so 1 by SC in the numerator. So again, this is S into RC plus 1 divided by SC. Okay. So what happens? This SC and SC cancels out. So as I can show here, 1 by SC into SRC plus 1 whole divided by SC. Okay, so we can cancel these two things out. So what happens to your transfer function? So V naught of S by V in of S. So that is given by 1 by 1 plus SRC. Okay, so the transfer function, so this can be written as H of S. H of S is equal to 1 by 1 plus SRC. Okay, so this is the transfer function in the Laplace domain for the simple RC circuit that is shown above. Okay, so now put S equal to J omega that then that will give you your transfer function that is Fourier in terms of the Fourier transfer. Put S equal to J omega. Okay, that is usually it is represented as H of omega itself. <coughs> H of omega equal to 1 by 1 plus j omega rc okay so we can also put this h of j omega so this is the transfer function that we have in terms of omega okay so in in the spectral characteristics we are dealing with omega okay so we are using the j omega s equal to j omega yes so the, we have just completed the first step so this is the transfer function of so this is transfer function of a low pass filter of an RC low pass filter. RC low pass filter. Okay. So now, what is our uh, formula to find the noise bandwidth? So noise bandwidth that is W sorry omega n <coughs> that is given by integral zero to infinity modulus of h of omega the whole square d omega divided by modulus of h of zero the whole square okay so h of omega and h of j omega they both represent the same right so we we can directly find out this value that is the denominator by substituting omega equal to zero okay, so what happens when we substitute omega equal to zero so at omega equal to zero modulus of h of 0 the whole square so that is equal to plus 1 okay so only thing that remains to be found out is the numerator so that is integral 0 to infinity modulus of 1 by 1 plus j omega rc the whole square d omega okay now how to find the modulus of this so modulus of the numerator divided by modulus of the denominator so what is the modulus of the denominator? It will be <coughs> root of okay, so a square plus b square. Okay, so this is a complex number. So it is 
the modulus is given by root of a square plus b square. So this integral it reduces to integral 0 to infinity 1 square divided by a square plus b square. So 1 plus so this is okay, so so 1 plus omega square r square c square okay so this is 1 plus omega square r square c square into d omega okay so now we have to integrate this so this is an integral in the variable omega okay we have an omega square here okay so r we have also r square c square here okay so better to write this in terms of in the form the standard integral that is one integral of 1 by 1 plus x square dx okay so for this type of integral we have the standard result that is this is equal to tan inverse of x okay so we are going to use this standard result okay so uh, make this as just omega square okay so or if this has any constant here that is integral 1 by 1 plus say x by a the whole square okay so then this can be written as tan inverse of x by a okay and then we can divide by this whatever 1 by a constant is there that we can divide it here so 1 by 1 by a that becomes a into tan inverse of x by a okay so now we can consider this as that constant so rc the whole square that can be considered as a constant okay so we can apply this formula so we can have this as integral 0 to infinity 1 by 1 plus omega square into rc the whole square okay so this is into d omega okay so when we integrate this so this becomes so what is the factor here what is the factor that is getting divided it is 1 by rc right so it is omega divided by 1 by rc the whole square okay so this can also be so i'm just rewriting this so integral 0 to infinity 1 by 1 plus omega divided by 1 by rc the whole square okay so this is same as this we just rewritten this okay compare this and this equation so this can be written as so this integral will result in so this is your constant so 1 by rc into tan inverse of so w by so that is omega by 1 by rc that is omega rc okay so we have a limit so that is from infinity and zero okay when you substitute this limit tan inverse of infinity so that will be pi by 2 okay so tan inverse of infinity will be pi by 2 tan of so 0 is 0 so for just the upper limit comes so it is pi by 2 rc Okay, so after substituting limits this is after substituting limits All right so what is this this is your noise bandwidth for the low pass system okay so the practical low pass systems noise bandwidth is given by pi by 2 rc Just a minute. 